state of West Virginia was reported sunk. Also, the battleship Oklahoma has been set on fire. The rest of the fleet is steamed out of Pearl Harbor. December 7th, 1941. A date which will live in infamy. The facts of yesterday and today speak for themselves. The people of the United States have already formed their opinions and well understand the implications to the very life and safety of our nation. At approximately 8 o'clock in the morning of December 7, 1941, I was leaving the breakfast table when the ship's siren for an air defense sounded. Having no anti-aircraft battle station, I paid little attention and suddenly I heard an explosion. I ran to the port leading to the quarterdeck and saw a bomb strike, a, lar a barge of some sort alongside the Nevada, or in that vicinity. The Marine Color Guard came in at this point, saying we were being attacked. I could distinctly hear machine gun fire. I believe at this point, our anti-aircraft battery opened up. Roosevelt's executive order was fueled by anti-Japanese sentiment among farmers who competed against Japanese labor. Politicians who sided with anti-Japanese constituencies in the general public whose frenzy was heightened by the Japanese attack of Pearl Harbor. on March 18, 1942, created a civilian agency known as the War Relocation Authority to enforce relocation. Evacuation orders were posted in Japanese American communities giving instructions on how to comply with the executive order. Many families sold their homes, their stores, and most of their assets. Because of the mad rush to sell, properties and inventories were often sold at a fraction of their true value. Until the camps were completed, many of the evacuees were brought to temporary centers, such as stables at local racetracks, by trucks, buses, and trains. Almost two-thirds of the interns were Nazi, or Japanese-American born in the United States. It made no difference that many had never been to Japan. Even Japanese-American veterans of World War I were forced to leave their homes. Shima Komoto. I was born in San Lorenzo, California in 1932. Regarding my internment years, my recollections of 55 years ago are fragmentary. It may be subconsciously on purpose. It was not a good experience. In the beginning, guards with questionable intelligence manned the towers around the fence camp. However, even if one could escape, there was no place to go in the desert. In Utah, on foot with an Asian base. School was held in designated barracks. I learned formation marching, volleyball, and basketball, but I have no recollection of being taught the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Therefore, I have gaps in my formal education. One of my teachers had an eighth grade educational background. 
All my teachers were Caucasian, though I'm sure there must have been Japanese teachers with teaching degrees. The Civil Liberties Acts of 1988, or the Japanese American Redress Bill, acknowledged that a grave injustice was done and mandated that Congress pay $20,000 to each victim of internment. Reparations were sent with a signed apology from the President himself. Adjustment to life outside the camps was difficult. I was afraid a great deal of the time. I didn't want to encounter incidents of prejudice. I became a timid and introverted person, which I've overcome as I've aged. Hopefully people will learn from this unfortunate episode in our history. People are people. Judge them as individuals, not by race, color, or creed. No Japanese American was ever tried for espionage.